Today I want to properly review how to record online streaming on your Apple, especially if you're using Google Meet. So if you've ever done any Google Meet recording, you'll notice that sometimes there's a huge problem because you can't record all of the conversation. And you may find this with other systems as well. You can make a recording, but um, you're missing a lot of crosstalk, you're missing the screen, you're missing the screen share sometimes. There's a lot of things that get cut out. So a foolproof way to record is actually to simply use QuickTime on your Mac and set up your audio so that it flows properly through the QuickTime system. The first thing that you're going to need to do is download and install something called Soundflower. So I'll link this up if you um, can't get the installation to work. I have another video that covers installing Soundflower and it will be linked at the end of this video and if that doesn't work give me an email and I'll help you do it. These instructions do work um, and I tested them again this morning. I uninstalled, reinstalled and they still work and I'm on the newest version of Catalina. So the first thing you need to do is download and install Soundflower. Uh, this company Rogue Amoeba, they have new software that you also can pay for that does the same thing but this is free so that's why I'm sharing it. After you download and install Soundflower, um, you will get instructions that explain how to set up two different devices. Now, audio devices can be found by hitting command spacebar and typing audio and you will get audio mini setup and you can open that up and that is this window. If you um, have never worked in this before, you would hit the plus sign and you would create a new aggregate device and you will hit the plus sign and create a new multi output device like this. Create aggregate, create multi output. The aggregate device needs to contain whatever microphones you use. So I use my Q4 USB for audio. If you use another microphone, you'll click it and you'll also click Soundflower 2 channel and make sure it's 2 in, 2 out and drift correction should come in automatically, but if not, hit that. And you want your clock source to be your main microphone. So you can choose all the microphones that you use, but I normally put my primary mic in here, and if I'm gonna use another microphone, I open this up and just switch this. So you can kind of hot switch this as you need it. You can choose different microphones. Then you wanna to go to your multi-output device, and you wanna choose um, everything that you normally output sound to during your meetings. So I, these are my headphones, so I've chosen them. And again, I normally don't output to more than one device. So I just would choose these. And if the battery went dead, I would open this up and quickly select this one. I'm gonna make my master device whatever I'm personally listening to. Then you wanna go ahead and enable both Soundflower channel two and 64 channel. And when that's done, if you want to rename these, you can double click on them. And after you double click, you can right click. So double click and then right click, you can give them a new name. So let me do that again. Double click, right click, double click, right click. Just like that, All right? So I've got my devices set up. Now I need to go into my meeting software. So I'm gonna go in here. Okay, I'm gonna go right there to settings and I'm gonna choose the multi output device for my speakers. So what this is gonna do is I'm gonna be speaking through my microphone. The audio is gonna loop back through here and that's going to go to my headphones and to the Soundflower plugin. So I'm gonna get that set up. All right, now I'm gonna open QuickTime. And in QuickTime, just to test this, I'm gonna do, uh, you can do an audio recording. So if you do this, you're just gonna grab the QuickTime audio. That's it, you can see it moving right now because it's um, set to the aggregate device. And the aggregate device, again, is my microphone and the, sound, the Soundflower 2 channel. This is where people who are speaking in your meeting are routed. So everyone else who is not you will be coming through here. So I have my QuickTime set. So now the aggregate device 
will record me and whoever's speaking in the meeting. So if you and want to do a video, a full video recording instead of just an audio recording with QuickTime, you open QuickTime and here you choose new screen recording. And then there are screen recording options and it's very similar. In the options, you simply click aggregate audio device. All right, I, I know many of you might be thinking, how do we know this actually works? Well, the next clip is going to be a weird echoey trip down the multiple aggregate audio device path. So watch this next clip and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, I know, I know many, many of you are probably, probably thinking, thinking, how do we know this really, really works? works? So, so I've connected, I've connected uh, myself, myself with another account, account on my phone, phone and, and I'm on my laptop, laptop same saying Google Meet, and, and just, just to review, review, I have, I have my audio, audio settings, settings here, multi-output, multi -output, and, and trust, trust me, I'm, I'm in, in quick, quick time, time recording, recording right, right now with, with the, the aggregate device, device and, and I'm also okay. All right, All right, so, so um, if this is working, working then, then you should, should be actually, actually hearing, hearing my voice, voice twice, twice through, through two different sources. sources. So, that's so that's kind, kind of strange, strange. so, so I'm going to demonstrate it in another way. I'm going to pick up my phone, and I'm going to walk, walk through the room. Okay, I am in the other room, and I am testing my audio, so now you should only be getting this audio, if you do hear me in the background, it's just because I'm on the other side of some glass, but it should be clear that I am on another audio source. All right, that's it. That's the uh, demonstration on how to use Soundflower to route your audio so then you can do a screen recording and capture everything. Now, you can do this with Screencastify and other programs, and you don't have to just use QuickTime. I use QuickTime because it's free and Soundflower is free. So anyone with an Apple can take advantage of this. One of the more important things to remember is that when you're organizing this and doing it, it is a good idea for you to do a simple test first, just to make sure that your audio setup is working, that your microphones are adjusted properly. And um, the reason I say that is your personal mic might not be strong enough or have the sound that you want compared to the plug in Soundflower when it's bringing other audio in. So what I always do, what I just did in the demo, is I invite uh, myself on another device, like a phone or an iPad, and then use that as my test bed instead of annoying other people and having them do it.